Hello everyone, this is Andrew at Crown Academy of English. Today I'm going to give you six pieces of advice for how to understand native English speakers. So the first piece of advice is to recognize common reduced forms. Now, native English speakers often use reduced forms while speaking informally. So what are reduced forms? Well, here are some common examples. Wanna. And this means want to. For example, a native speaker would say, I want to go to London. And this means, I want to go to London. But when he's saying it quickly and informally, um, it sounds like it's one word and he doesn't pronounce the letter T. So it's, I want to go to London. Another common example is gonna. And this means going to. Example, I'm gonna wash the car. And this means, I'm going to wash the car. It's the future. Don't know means, in fact, don't know. What time is it? I don't know. And the fourth very common example is gotta. This means got to. So it means um, when you have to do something. I've got to do my homework means I have got to do my homework. I must do my homework. Okay, so these are very common reduced forms that native English speakers use. But be very careful because these reduced forms are considered to be bad English. Okay, so it's not good English. But they are very common in informal spoken English. Okay, so it's very common. And since it is very common, it is important that you recognize and understand them because you will hear them a lot. Okay. However, because they are bad English, then we don't write them. Okay, we, we only write them if it is direct speech, when we are quoting the exact words that somebody is saying. But in all other cases, then they are only used in informal spoken English. But try not to say them yourselves, okay? It's better to use the full form when you are speaking. Second piece of advice is learn to ignore fillers. So, learn to ignore um, common words and phrases which are not important. So, fillers are words and phrases which don't really mean anything, don't add anything to the meaning of the sentence. Here are some common examples in English. So, it's words like actually, anyway, Basically, by the way, um, I mean, incidentally, in fact, obviously, well, you know. So all of these words um, are words that they don't really mean anything. They're not important. And often we say them when we are thinking what we want to say. So we say, we say them, but we're actually... Um, pausing perhaps and trying to think of the words, the important words that we want to say. So it's important when you hear these words to try to ignore them, try to filter them out because they don't really um, have any importance. Okay? Now, I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to say a sentence 
which has 20 words. And I'm going to say it like a native speaker, and I want you to try to understand. Okay? You ready? By the way, I saw Mark yesterday, um, so obviously I said hello to him, but he basically ignored me. Okay, did you understand that? Here is what I said. I said, by the way, I saw Mark yesterday, um, so obviously I said hello to him, but he basically ignored me. So there are 20 words, but in fact, all the words in red are fillers, and they don't really add anything to the sentence. So if we ignore the fillers, if we in fact remove the fillers, then this is what I said. I saw Mark yesterday, I said hello to him, but he ignored me. So there are only 13 words which are important. Okay? So um, try to learn these fillers and then try to recognize them and then ignore them. Okay? They're not very important. Prepare. Often, not always, but it's often possible to prepare for a difficult conversation with a native speaker. Um, an example, for example, if you are going into a shop and you are buying a television and you know you need to have a long conversation with the seller of the television. So the advice is, first of all, prepare your questions in advance. I'm sure you know what questions, what information you need in advance. So prepare them in advance. Example, how long is the guarantee? Okay, so if you prepare the question in advance, it helps you um, concentrate more on the replies that you will have to those questions. Okay, so you can concentrate more on understanding the native speaker. And you can also anticipate the questions that the seller will ask you. So you can guess what questions he will ask you so that you are ready for them. Example, what is your budget? He will definitely ask you this question because this, um, this means um, how much money do you want to spend? Okay, so again, if you guess the question, um, then you will not be surprised when you hear the question. You'll be ready for it. Okay? And of course, you can then, if you um, have guessed the question, you can prepare your answers to those questions. Okay? Example, my budget is £200. So by doing the preparation of these questions and answers, um, it allows you to concentrate more on the rest of the conversation. Okay? Because of course there will be things that you cannot prepare for in the conversation. But you will have more time and energy to concentrate on those parts of the conversation. Finally, before you enter the shop, you can learn all the vocabulary related to buying a television. So you can look in the dictionary and you can learn words like screen, size, contrast, price, guarantee, remote control. Okay? So I understand it's not always possible, but in many situations it is possible to prepare for a difficult conversation. Other examples are things like job interviews, booking a hotel, um, buying a train ticket, all of those situations you can prepare for. Even um, an oral exam, for example the IELTS, you can prepare for that. Very often it's the same questions. Okay? Direct the conversation. 
a conversation is easier if you control it. Okay, it is possible to control um, a conversation. And here are just two basic techniques. First of all, you can talk about subjects that you know about or that interest you. For example, if you're interested in football, then you can start talking about football. Um, and the reason is, is that you will then be more motivated um, to talk about it and to listen to the other person. Um, the opposite situation is if the other person is talking about something like football, but you are not interested in football, then you will very quickly lose interest and you'll be bored and you'll stop listening. Ask questions. So if you ask a question, then it forces the other person to talk about that subject. Okay? So um, if they said, well, this weekend I watched television, then I played football, then you can ask a question about playing the football. Okay? And it is also a good technique um, because it slows the person down. If somebody is talking for too long, then if you ask them a question, it forces them to stop and to listen to you. Okay? So direct the conversation. Avoid large groups of native speakers. It is difficult, very difficult, to understand lots of native speakers talking together. Okay, so try to meet very small groups of native speakers. It is much, much easier. Um, the worst situation you can have is to go to a party, maybe at a bar or a pub or a restaurant, and you're sitting at a table and there are 10 native speakers. It is very, very difficult and very, very tiring for you to try to understand because they will be talking quickly, informally, with slang and lots of jokes, um, lots of cultural references that you do not understand. And since they are in the majority, they will not, um, they will probably not slow down for you. Okay, it's difficult. So it's in, it is impossible to direct a conversation, um, to control a, a conversation when there is a majority of native speakers. So it's very important to meet small groups of native speakers. If possible, just one or two. And Again, if possible, choose a quiet place with no music, no television, um, no traffic in the background. Okay, so this is an ideal situation here. Just one other person, maybe two, um, and in a quiet place. Okay, finally, if you do not understand what someone says to you, if you are with somebody and it's just impossible, you know, you they're talking too quickly and you hardly understand anything, then you have to very quickly, um, very soon, very quickly, ask the person to speak more slowly. Um, tell them straight away because sometimes they don't actually realize they don't realize they're speaking too quickly. Very similar, ask the person to repeat themselves. So um, if they say something that you really don't understand, um, ask them to repeat it. Okay, And do it quite quickly as well. Don't wait for um, 30 or 40 minutes. Um, because they might even be offended as well. They, it, it's better to tell someone um, very early that you do not understand them. 
Another technique, a good technique, is to ask somebody to spell a difficult word. And you can even do this even if you know how to spell the word. Just use it as a technique to slow the person down, okay? To let them know that you do not understand them, okay? So when they spell the word, then it allows you then to to direct the conversation a bit more, okay? <laughs> and you can simply just use your facial expression. So you show a confused face. This is particularly useful if it is somebody who speaks too much, who speaks and speaks and speaks and talks and doesn't let you speak. Um, so you can just simply show a, a confused face to let the person know that he is wasting his time talking because you do not understand. Interrupt them. Honestly, if if it's getting too bad, then just just interrupt them and say, sorry, I don't understand. Um, um, again, and this will again slow them down and let them realize that you are not a native speaker and that they need to make some changes. Okay? And the most important advice I can give you, the best advice I can give you is do not pretend that you understand. That is very, very important. Um, never, never pretend that you understand someone because if you do that, they will talk and talk and talk for hours and hours and hours um, and then they will ask you a question and then you will have to say, well, I'm sorry, I don't understand and they will wonder why you didn't already tell them. Okay, so... Um, early in the conversation, tell them that you don't understand and ask them to make some changes. Okay? So, there we are. That is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Here are a few other video lessons which you might be interested in. So, to start the video, you simply need to click on the screen. Okay, my name is Andrew at Crown Academy of English. Thanks for watching and I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.